Thanks. Uh, so greetings uh, from France. Um, so I will, I will indeed uh, speak to you um, about uh, the future circular colliders project with uh, an emphasis to the first phase of it, which uh, is planned to be an E plus E minus collider. And that machine has something to, to tell about flavors and I will try to, to convince you of that. And um, um, of, of course, it's a, it's a wider project than, than just uh, flow physics. Uh, this is really a particle physics uh, long-term uh, vision for. Um, so I'm moving my, my slides and that's the, the outline I want to, to propose for for this hour or so. Uh, coming back to the, the standard model uh, that's been abundantly discussed in, in that event, but maybe coming back to it from the point of view of its three parameters and, and what experiments can, can tell about this. And hence, I would speak of global fits of, uh, of the three parameters in order to test the standard model uh, hypothesis and discuss uh, the, the open questions uh, to the field for, for maybe now and, and, and for far off future. Then a rapid introduction to the future secular collider project, uh, words about the, the electron machine and let's say the, the prototype detectors that uh, are thought of just to, to give you a flavor of uh, how this kind of detectors are looking like. And this is pretty different from a drone machine. Uh, the physics case at large in, in a few slides, and then I will go into uh, what flavor physics uh, ca can bring actually in the, the general uh, landscape. And then some word about uh, implementation and that, that would be the outlook uh, of this talk. So let's start uh, rapidly with the, the, the three parameters of the standard model. So I, I, the title of this section is standard model became uh, a theory and, and maybe that happened at the very end of the lab experiments, uh, which was E plus E minus uh, colliders at Z and W threshold 20 years ago. Um, and uh, I'm starting by um, the SU2 left uh, cross U1 hypercharge uh, unification in the list of the three parameters of the standard model. So as any gauge uh, theory, there is one parameter that, uh, that you cannot uh, predict from first principles, and this is the, the coupling constant. So there we, we do have uh, two interactions uh, at play and that's the weak and the electromagnetic and as such you end up with uh, two free parameters that uh, are the Fermi constant or GW depends what you like, these are the same and the fine structure constant uh, alpha electromagnetic. And uh, it is often said that, that the standard model has uh, far too many parameters maybe that's true uh, but they are coming after uh, the symmetry is uh, spontaneously uh, broken and that is meant in order to describe uh, the masses of the elementary fermions and the, the masses of the intermediate bosons so of course these are the three parameters that are coming at first so I've counted here the nine masses of the of the fermions and noted them MF. Uh, there are two uh, intermediate bosons that do acquire mass in this process of uh, electroweak uh, symmetry spontaneous breaking. Uh, and this will be noted the mass of the Z and the mass of the W. There is also the photon, but that uh, elegantly uh, gets no mass in that uh, process of uh, electroweak symmetry breaking. Uh, in order to break the symmetry, uh, you had to introduce um, 
a scalar field, uh, a doublet. Uh, that's the phi noted here. And the shape of the potential can be uh, hypothesized to be the simplest uh, one uh, in phi four. Um, so there are two additional parameters that are coming there, the mu square and the lambda, which conveniently are um, often brought as the vacuum expectation value, so the value of phi at the minimum of the potential, and the mass of the famous Brotenglert X boson, which are, uh, which are related to another formulation of mu square uh, and lambda, but on the physical uh, side. And that's not all, because uh, when the fermions do acquire mass, the, the, there is the, this is not only about the, the mass matrix, it's also about the mass mixing matrix, they can mix. And uh, as far as the quarks are concerned, uh, you spent uh, a very long time with the, the CKM, with the Kobayashi Maskawa paradigm and the CKM matrix, uh, which is a three times three complex n unitary matrix. And so uh, this can be described by means of uh, only four independent parameters when the, the phases of the quarks are, are redefined and, uh, and the unitarity relations are applied. So um, as the masses of the fermions, except for the top quark, and we will see the the status of it in, a, in one slide. Uh, those four parameters, they are decoupled from the rest of the theory. So, um, and, and the model is, is not telling you uh, anything about them. So you have to build up a consistency test uh, in order to, to check that the standard model passes the, the hypothesis. So uh, no suspense, uh, it is right now. Um, and then you can do the, the metrology of those parameters. So this is uh, really in the interplay of, um, of the experiments and the theory that the standard model we know uh, emerges. So in the standard model, you also have uh, QCD and, uh, and that brings uh, as a gauge theory, another additional free parameter that's the coupling constant noted uh, alpha S. There is, this uh, slight subtlety that uh, I've noted uh, here, that there is another parameter constrained nowadays to be extremely uh, close to, to zero, but that is a, a potential flavor a CP violating uh, phase inside uh, QCD. So we know since, uh, since years uh, that uh, neutrinos, uh, do oscillate and as such uh, they are massive and so uh, there will be this mixing there will be the masses of course as three parameters and the mixing so these are additional seven parameters that you might want to uh, embody um, in the list of three parameters and so at the end uh, 20 uh, not all of them are independent so, so you can get to 18 if you do wish and uh, and 28, uh, if you include neutrinos and, and the strong uh, CP. Um, so what I'd like to do in, in the next slides is to reorganize uh, a bit this, uh, this list and, uh, and see what is our knowledge about uh, those parameters and, and the global uh, tests which are uh, made in order to uh, determine them. So let me start by, by QCD. Um, so that's the, the best of, of the knowledge or, or approximately, well, you see the date here that, that's picked up for, for October 2015. Um, so these are the, the different alpha S uh, determination, which are noted usually at the mass of the Z because uh, the coupling constants are running. And so you have on this plot the energy as the abscissa, energy scale at which you make your measurement and, uh, and the value of alpha S. And you see how beautifully uh, QCD is uh, describing the, the running of alpha S, the lines, solid lines are the prediction and their uncertainties and you have the experimental points which are 
provided on the curve. So to some extent, this curve uh, tells you that, uh, that QCD is the theory of the, the strong interactions. One could consider it's, it's over, but there are many, uh, many phenomena that you, that you need to qualify yet and to, to understand. Um, but I want just to mention here that uh, even if, if that is a tremendous success for understanding, a better alpha S determination is, uh, is desirable, be it only in order to make advanced predictions uh, for the rest of the parameters I will discuss afterwards. Okay, so in the reorganization, then I'd like to introduce uh, the connections in between the, the three parameters. So I, I, I've said that the nine masses of the fermions are three parameters of the theory that uh, you, you have to, to measure them. But in fact, um, eight of them are, are decoupled from the rest of the standard parameters. There's nothing much more to do here than, than measuring them in order to to, to be able to make predictions. But the top quark has a specific status um, because it dominates the quantum corrections, so the loop effects um, that happen uh, in the radiative corrections, in particular for the intermediate bosons mass propagators. But you, you have learned uh, in, in, in the, the school all along that the, the top quark was also part of, uh, of the diagrams with loops in the standard model for the, the decays of the, the biatrons uh, in particular. So that's the very same interplay that, that we are seeing here. So the diagrams with propagators are, are provided on the top, on the bottom of this slide. And maybe let's uh, let's have a look at the first one. So that's the, the self uh, energy uh, contribution to the mass of the Z and the, the W. And you can have uh, in the vacuum a loop of quarks. And it happens that this process is proportional to uh, the mass to the square of the fermion, which is uh, which is exhibited here, and so the top is actually overwhelming the standard model contributions for the radiative uh, correction. So when you determine the mass of the W or the mass of the Z, you have uh, a handle of uh, these quantum corrections at one loop and even at two loops in the in the vacuum. Uh, that's not the only thing. So the, the non-abelian structure of the electroweak theory makes uh, the intermediate bosons to uh, couple with each other. So the Z can couple to a WW. And so you have also contribution of, uh, of the W there. And uh, the X can uh, as well couple with uh, intermediate bosons. And that's the, the diagrams on the bottom. So it means that when you are measuring the mass of the W or the mass of the Z and some other observables, uh, you have handled on the, the mass of the X boson. Uh, I'm continuing the reorganization and, uh, and going to the CKM, um, to the CKM uh, matrix. So there are four elements, as I said earlier, they are decoupled from the rest of the theory. And as uh, the global electroweak precision test uh, sector, uh, you need to make a global fit uh, in order to uh, test the standard model hypothesis. So I suppose that you have seen many times this plot and, and some others. Uh, and uh, well, I mean, the conclusion nowadays is that uh, there is an intriguing, remarkable agreement in, among all observables and uh, defines this uh, little region. So standard model as pass the test, then you can make the metrology of the three parameters of the model. And once you have that, you're in capacity to uh, make predictions. So let me just advertise uh, uh, a tool which is uh, 
developed by the, the CKM Fitter Group. Uh, this is called CKM Live. Uh, and you have the address uh, around there and you can run your uh, favorite, uh, let's say, observable in the standard model uh, framework and you can predict uh, and, and run the CKM fitter just through uh, a web application. So uh, we have defined the two things then, uh, um, two, two main, let's say, global consistency check, one, one which is uh, discussing the mass of the intermediate bosons and the mass of the top, uh, and that's the global electroweak precision test. And there is the CKM test, and, and both of them they are constituting the pillars of the of our knowledge uh, nowadays. Um, so let's uh, let's check rapidly the results for those uh, global tests. Um, so when you look at which parameters are connected, I, I discussed the fact that the, the top, the W, the H, the Z masses are uh, connected. And of course, the coupling uh, constants. So here it's noted GF and, uh, and alpha electromagnetics. In this global fit, it happens that GF in the standard model, uh, alpha electromagnetic and MZ, are, are so well measured that, that they can be fixed in the global test. And then there are only uh, three left parameters to be determined, the top, the W, and the X. And so that, that, that used to be a, a tremendous success uh, because uh, the top quark and the X boson were not discovered at the moment to, those tests were performed for the first time. And I'm showing uh, to you a moment where it was pre-discovery uh, of the of the Higgs boson, and you see that uh, the indirectly you could predict that if the standard model is correct, well, the, that must be the mass of the W. This is governed by the red lips here, uh, and uh, there should be a six star. Uh, the top quark with a mass that has to be 175 plus or minus something. And you, and you find here the measurements um, which, uh, which were made. So for the top quark, it was before discovery, a prediction. Um, and, uh, and you can do the, the same uh, exercise with the X boson and hence it was possible to predict, uh, let's say, the upper limit of the mass of the Higgs boson. And you see that in 2012, there was only this little space which was, uh, which was open uh, for, for discovery uh, yet. And this is at that place that, uh, that the Higgs boson was discovered. So I'm, I'm summarizing the two pillars of, uh, of the standard model uh, knowledge. So that's the, the CKM sector and the electroweak precision test sector. Um, so the X boson has been discovered and uh, at the place well, where it was indicated uh, to be by, by the, the data. Uh, and it seems to, to behave uh, as uh, the standard model uh, do say it, it, it does. Uh, so here you have the dependency on, on the mass of the couplings of the, the X boson uh, as it is in the standard model. So you have a straight line because that's uh, 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 because that's the square which, uh, which is there. Um, okay. So I'm coming back to the lessons and that would introduce the, 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 the need for the, the future machine somehow. So the, the standard model has cleared so far all the attacks that uh, the lab uh, machine and experiments, Tevatron, B factories, LHC, and all uh, the single observable uh, experiments. Well, not maybe uh, all of them. Um, and so there, there are 
certainly uh, compelling theoretical arguments uh, that do require uh, beyond standard model physics, but I, I will overlook them and instead just discuss that uh, there are three indisputable uh, measurements or observations that uh, that are crying for for BSM. The first, uh, this these are neutrinos, so so they do have a mass and. And their status is, uh, let's say, um, uh, st still to be understood. Uh, and it's tempting also to, to enhance the neutral particle content with uh, right-handed states, which uh, would be heavy. Um, and then this is most mostly driven by, uh, by cosmological uh, observation, but uh, dark matter is seems to be uh, in order and uh, and there is no obvious candidate uh, in in the standard model and of course something that you that you've heard of uh, i guess in, in the school uh, for several places the, the bionic asymmetry in the universe is also uh, difficult to accommodate uh, in the standard model and, and this might have something to do with uh, the cp violation studies Okay, so I'm I'm trying to make a kind of scenario for for the future and and try to see what are the things we, we do know and the things that we would like to to learn depending uh, on, on the scenario. So the first uh, scenario would be that we find a new heavy particle at the run three of the the LHC, and if that happens, well. Uh, uh, the high luminosity LHC collider can study it to a certain uh, extent. Well, the fact that none uh, has been found yet at the, at the run two makes it uh, makes this scenario a bit uh, complicated. Um, if the mass is small enough and that it couples to two electrons, then the the linear collider at high energy can be the way to measure this. Uh, these uh, new particles. So there are larger uh, energies that are needed to study the, the whole spectrum of this uh, new uh, physics. And of course, you, you always want to get the underlying uh, quantum structure uh, to be studied. So the second scenario uh, is that uh, no new particle is, uh, is found but the X boson have uh, non-standard properties. So again, I luminosity LHC by narrowing the precision of the, uh, for instance, the couplings uh, of the X boson can study it to a certain extent, but this cries to get a, a, a X factory. And, uh, so, and so far, I plus, E minus X factories are the, are the most, uh, uh, that's easy to, to imagine. Um, you would like to, to understand the, the quantum structure and then ZW and top factories are certainly uh, the way to go. And uh, energy frontier at some point is in order because that means that new physics is uh, around. The third scenario is maybe the, the, the one to which we we are living right now. So no new particle is found. We do have standard X boson properties, but there are vibrations uh, around the, the flavor observable. So again, that tells that the new physics is not uh, far away. And, uh, and there, so Z, uh, W and top factories for the quantum and flavor structure are in order. And, and we do have, uh, the energy frontier to find the, the corresponding spectrum. And there is the critical scenario, uh, the, that is that we find no new particle, uh, the X boson is standard, and eventually the, the current anomalies uh, do come back uh, in the realm of the standard model. And so there, the, the, the knowledge has to be built for the, the precision and uh, and then ZWX top factories are in order. 
and then trying to push, define the energy scale at which new physics shall happen and uh, push the energy frontier to the best of our knowledge. So I'm, I'm clicking that uh, we are in between the, the third and the fourth uh, scenario. And okay, without much surprise, I'm, I'm noting where uh, FCC can have uh, an impact. And you see that this is uh, pretty much everywhere. So that then I will have to justify this kind of, of statement. Okay, so that uh, that brought me to the, the end of, uh, of the introduction. Um, and I, I'm moving now to the introduction of the, the FCC project. And I think I will try to be uh, faster than, than I was at the beginning of this talk. Um, so let me start by the, the, the former uh, European uh, high energy physics strategy in 2013 that uh, encouraged CERN to, to undertake uh, design studies around the, the next uh, accelerators after uh, LHC. And the, the point there uh, was to, uh, to have an educated vision of, uh, of the reach of future machines at the next round of the European strategy in 2020. So this somehow started at that very moment. There was this uh, proposal that uh, one could um, get a two-phase uh, project. You see here the size of the LHC. The idea is, well, a, we could uh, have a tunnel of uh, 100 kilometers and, and operate an E plus E minus collider first. Uh, up to the, the top uh, threshold production and ends the 100 kilometers uh, because of the, of the synchrotron radiation uh, effect. Uh, and, uh, and the ultimate uh, goal would be to, to welcome there uh, a proton-proton collider at uh, very high energies. So then. 10 times the, at least the, the energy of the LHC and that is uh, essentially limited by the magnets that you that you can put uh, over there. So from the start it was foreseen that it happens uh, in the Geneva region and that's in order to benefit from the, the accelerator complex that is successfully operated since uh, years. Okay, so the, the point was to get a conceptual design report and a cost review at the time of 2020 and that, uh, two years ago, and that happened. Um, so the design study has been completed and fulfilled the mandate. There are conceptual design reports discussing the physics opportunities and the characteristics of the machine that have been uh, issued. Um, and the, the project has been uh, further discussed at the, the latest uh, European strategy uh, update. And so these are the, the things I will rapidly discuss about the recommendation. So it has been uh, indeed uh, recommended that one should prepare um, a X factory followed by a, a future Hadron Collider. Um, and that uh, that is giving a handle on, on the constraints to the energy scale where new physics to to happen um, by the the e plus e minus uh, uh, machine at first. Okay, so the design study became uh, a feasibility uh, study, and there is a let's call it an FCC integrated uh, program that is uh, ongoing uh, now at CERN and I will uh, touch uh, uh, around the different points of it in the rest of, uh, of the talk. Um, okay, um, so let me provide uh, some additional uh, comments. So uh, of course, uh, this machine cannot happen uh, before the, the completion of the high luminosity LHC program, you cannot run uh, the two accelerators uh, together. Uh, yet uh, they are independent. So uh, that could happen uh, seamlessly uh, after the, 
the high luminosity LHC. There is a sequence there, which is uh, somehow following the successes of the, of the LEP LHC uh, sequence. So this is the E plus E minus collider first. And then comes the, the Hadron Collider. So uh, let, let me note that uh, the program is kind of inclusive, and, and this is in particular true for uh, the Higgs physics, uh, because a high energy proton proton collider is uh, invincible for the trilinear Higgs couplings. This is uh, the machine to get uh, percentage precision on that, let's say, very last uh, standard model parameter that governs the shape uh, of the X potential. And so FCC and FCC HH have the, this complementarity in, uh, in, in, the, in the X physics, which is obvious, but it's true uh, elsewhere. And that might be true as well in in flavor, but this is also clear that uh, uh, even if this is appealing, uh, this is subjected to in-depth studies in light of uh, what LHCB upgrade two uh, would have said, uh, working with uh, high multiplicity of, uh, of vertices in particular. Okay, so let me give some uh, some words about the the electron man and um, and the detectors so the the electron machine has a, a program which crosses the four uh, relevant electroweak thresholds maybe five uh, so this is namely the z pole um, so you produce the, the z boson there we, we would we'd like to make uh, more than 10 to the power 12 uh, then you cross the W W threshold, and you can measure precisely, for instance, the mass of the W. Uh, there could be the, the direct X production, but I will say just a word about that afterwards. Um, and then you have the, the X production pair, where you can gather a lot of uh, events and make the precision physics of the X boson. And eventually you have the top uh, production uh, threshold where you can measure, uh, for instance, the top quark mass. So te technically uh, you need to have two rings. So it's a top-up ejection as, as it is for the, for the B factories. Uh, and that's to cope with the high current and large number of benches at uh, operating points up to the ZH. Uh, joint production. Uh, to some extent, the, the Bell 2 uh, accelerator, which is super keg B, uh, is, a, is a kind of, of benchmark uh, for, for the FCCE machine. And in some, to some extent, I mean, it's already meeting or or even exceeding uh, the requirements that uh, that is uh, necessary for, for FCCE. Let me skip the machine parameters. This slide has mostly the, the interest of, uh, of stating what are the energies of the beams at the four electroweak thresholds and to tell that, well, it looks like several machines uh, actually, but it will have to be embedded in, a, in the same. And so the main uh, important figure is this one. This is the luminosity figure. You have the square root of S, center of mass energy of uh, the E plus E minus in that very case uh, collision and the luminosity uh, in units of 10 to the power 34. And you have the different uh, X factory that have been uh, thought of. Uh, which are represented on that plot. So the green is click. So you see that you start uh, at the top threshold, let's say, and you reach uh, several uh, TVs. Uh, you have in blue the linear collider called the uh, International Linear Collider, meant to, to be operated and built in, uh, in Japan. 
uh, and, and you see uh, what the baseline uh, dark blue and the upgrade in light blue. And you have the two uh, E plus E minus circular collider projects uh, in black and, and red, so respectively uh, the Chinese project CPC and the, the FCCE. Uh, which has uh, started from the beginning with that strategy from the Z to the top. And uh, the, the project from China is, uh, is uh, joining this, uh, this strategy. Um, yeah, so uh, what, what do we see uh, on this plot? Of course, at the low energy uh, part, the low energy, uh, the Z-Pole and W, w uh, the statistics. Uh, is just fantastic. You will get uh, 10 to the power 5 Z per second, uh, 100 kilohertz of Z. Uh, you would have uh, 10 kilohertz of, uh, no, not uh, kilohertz there, 10 power to the power 4 W per hour, and then, uh, and then uh, a thousand of figs and top per day. And so this. Uh, Phenomenal statistics, you, you will get it in a very clean environment because in the plus C minus uh, interaction, hey, there is a, only the e plus C minus interaction. So no pileup, uh, uh, a very controlled uh, beam backgrounds, energy uh, measurement and momentum constraints. And this is uh, actually without uh, trigger it's, it's never without trigger but i mean it's it's a 100 percent efficient trigger so may, maybe that is the, the number i i'm always discussing uh, so you produce the lab experiment in a minute so we this is a way to think that that this is a breakthrough there are many measurements in our current knowledge which are still limited by the lab uh, precision. That's, by the way, true also in flavors, where, for instance, B to C tau nu is uh, limited, um, is best known at lab. Uh, and so, uh, well, if you do a lab in a minute, uh, you, you, you will do a lot uh, of physics with that machine. So let me let me go fast on, uh, on the thresholds, which are uh, interesting then for the uh, flavors, uh, the focus will be on the Z pole and on the WW production. Um, and uh, in the time allocation of the machine, it is thought that there would be four years for the, for the Z pole. And in fact, two years in which you will gather most of the statistics. Um, and uh, the particles that can be produced there, it's uh, as uh, for LHC, uh, you have uh, incoherent production of uh, BB bar pair, and, and, and then uh, all species of particles can be obtained. So you have here in units of 10 to the power uh, nine, uh, the yields that are expected for particles and the equivalent yield is uh, of course expected for anti-particles. So uh, that means that this is uh, 15 to 20, the statistics of, uh, of Bell, uh, that is uh, producing B0 and, and, and B plus. Uh, not only because there is the above to the epsilon 5s, but let's say mostly um, at, the, at the epsilon 4s. Uh, so significant. Uh, uh, statistics uh, with respect to Bell. For LHCB, this is more complicated because of the trigger, and we cannot um, immediately compare the numbers. But of course, the cross section at uh, proton proton colliders is just invincible. So there are many places where LHCB will get uh, higher statistics, but I will show you that, that it's uh, competing uh, anyway with the, the e plus e minus machine at, uh, at high energy. Okay, so detectors, uh, I don't want to spend uh, much time about this. Uh, the, the thing I would like to, to highlight is that uh, flavor physics is 
certainly a place that is constraining most uh, the, the detectors. So at E plus E minus, the thing that you want is uh, precision, and, and precision means uh, lightness. And so, for instance, if you look at this uh, detector concept that has been brought forward, uh, you you get uh, an extremely light uh, system with a vertex detector, uh, a drift chamber with helium, and uh, and eventually a, a wrapping up um, of silicon tracker just before the the, uh, the the electromagnetic calorimeter. So lightness is in order for for those detectors, and flavors have something to say about what uh, what it should be. So let me uh, show you the different machines uh, size because that's always interesting to figure out the, the sizes of the future projects. So you have the, the 100 kilometers FCC, which is uh, provided in this dashed line. Um, and you have the click, uh, for instance, the click uh, three TV, which is the, the 50 kilometer uh, long. So these are the projects which are foreseen or studied at, uh, at CERN. Uh, and you have also the ILC in Japan, which is reported at the very same place in order to, to have the, the scale. Uh, so be it only for the accurate study of the Higgs boson, where an electron collider seems uh, the way to go for, for the future. And so let me just flash uh, the precision that one can expect with this machine. So. Uh, X physics uh, is uh, central, of course. You have the plus e minus annihilation, you produce a Z star, and you can have an X strahlung, so radiation of the X boson from the Z. And that's the dominant uh, process. At higher energy, you have also the W fusion that can give you X boson. At the end, that's 10 million, uh, well, 1 million X decays, which might be. <coughs> produced, so, so, sorry, and um, and there is the energy momentum constraint which uh, apply uh, to to the plus C minus machine, and so you can make exquisite precision uh, measurements as this table is indicating. So mostly, uh, well, you gain uh, you gain up to one order of magnitude precision in the knowledge of the coupling. And this table is interesting as well to see a complementarity between the E plus E minus and, and X machine. So uh, that's, uh, that's the plot uh, I've shown to you uh, earlier. Dependence uh, of the, the coupling with the mass of the different particles. And uh, of course, you want to access now the, the smaller state. And just for fun, uh, it could be possible that one measures uh, the Yukawa coupling of the electron. So of course, it's totally inaccessible if you look at the X decays themselves. But here, the luminosity of the, the FCC is so large that you could imagine to make it plus or minus at 105. Uh, MeV, so the X mass, and uh, manage to get a control on the beam in such a way that you pick up in the width of the X boson. So that, that would be just uh, fantastic. And then there are studies which are ongoing uh, about that. So let me highlight uh, in two slides uh, the global electroweak precision test. So one of the pillars of our current knowledge. Uh, so that's the situation nowadays. You have the direct measurements which are uh, provided there. So this is again the, the mass of the W as a function of the top mass. You have the uh, constraints as nowadays with the light blue uh, thing. And you have the future precision that you can get with the FCCE. Blue is direct, red is, an, is indirect. And in the, the consistency test, of this, uh, you can define the energy scale if a disagreement, well, 
if there is a disagreement, you, you are the energy scale at which new physics does occur. And if there is no disagreement, then you just put a bond over there. Uh, a way to figure out the, the precision, so you, you see the breakthrough uh, visually from there, but this is also to, to project the test onto the prediction of the Higgs boson mass. So indirect uh, determination of the Higgs boson mass can be compared to the direct uh, measurement. And that is remarkable because these are corrective radiations, radiative corrections. Uh, and that, uh, that depends logarithmically with the, the Higgs boson mass. So the, this fantastic precision of uh, one to two GeV uh, defines uh, which energy scale you, you can get. So I'm seeing that uh, I'm extremely uh, uh, long on the, on the physics, which is not flavor. So I, I, will, I will go there uh, immediately. And so flavor, this is uh, not only heavy uh, flavors, so the, the B, uh, the C, uh, and the tau lepton, but there, there might be also heavy state among the neutrals. And FCCE, since it will produce uh, an enormous amount of Z to nu nu bar, um, 10 to the power 12, and could hope for another magnitude more, uh, then you can uh, check whether the active neutrino is not coupling with uh, potential uh, heavy neutral state. And then you find it in your detector through those processes. And you see that FCC can dig very deep into the, the parameter space, which are allowed for that. Of course, those heavy neutral states, they are answering some, some questions, uh, fundamental questions uh, about BSM uh, nature. Um, okay. Uh, the tau physics has to be considered here. This is a slide which is advocating that uh, Z into uh, two different uh, flavor charge leptons is an interesting place to look. But let's go uh, to the, the flavors. Um, so I'm comparing here the, the characteristics or the features that uh, or the attributes, the advantages that you get uh, at different machine technologies. So that's the epsilon forest, that's the PP as the as well too, uh, PP as LHCB, and Z0 as it would be for, for FCC. So all hadron species, this is realized when you don't have the, in the coherent production. The I boost is attained also there. Of course, the enormous production cross-section, that is a characteristic unique to the proton-proton the collider. But this is mitigated a bit here by the fact that we have a, a very high luminosity. And then the advantages of E plus E minus is that uh, there is no trigger or negligible trigger losses, uh, low backgrounds, clean environment, and the initial energy constraint. So for flavors, it's, it's clear that uh, you are in a better place where this is fully constrained as, as the epsilon forest, but this is reasonably known uh, at the Z0 such that the energy constraints still uh, appear. So what is the, the purpose of this slide? This is to show that uh, by essence, uh, you, you gather with uh, E plus E minus at the Z pole, the advantages of all the experimental environments that have been used so far for, for flavor physics. Um, let, me, uh, let me highlight again the number of particles which are, which are produced there. Uh, and 10 minutes. The... Yeah, you okay. have 10 more Thank... minutes. Thank you. Thanks. So there is a significant uh, boost, and that's maybe uh, one of the important uh, characteristics that uh, has to be uh, used here. And I, I would like to note that uh, the neutrals uh, and the flavor tagging for CP violation is uh, at the level of what Bell 2 uh, has. So I have made, uh, let's say, some categories with, uh, with no hierarchy key there. Um, 
about what are the, the, the possibilities or the opportunities that, that you can get at FCCE to go further in our understanding of the, of the flavors. Um, so let's, uh, let's start by, uh, by the electroweak penguins in the standard model and, uh, and friends. So that is the physics related to the, the current flavor anomalies. Um, so, I, I mean, this slide has been written uh, already years ago, but uh, I mean, the relevance of their, of their study, uh, uh, I mean, remains whatever happens for, for this. Um, and in particular, when it comes to the, to the third generation. And uh, uh, this is a, a place where, where likely uh, FCCE is unique. You catch the tau lepton, uh, or you can uh, constrain the tau lepton thanks to, to its TK uh, flight. And there have been uh, studies around there. Uh, in order to, to see what would be the, the capabilities uh, of the FCC environment to measure uh, those things. Um, and I, I will flash uh, uh, a plot uh, afterwards. So it happens that it's intimately related to the actual performance that you can get at a vertex de detector. And, uh, and to some extent, uh, well, this, the physics reach can help to define what are the, the, the necessary uh, performance of the vertex detector. So it's a, it's a work which is completely uh, entangled with, uh, uh, with the development of the detector. Um, yeah, and the, the, the tau final state is, is really important because um, of course, the, the, the lepton flavor anomalies, this is related to, to the mass uh, and uh, having the handle of the tau mass uh, as, as null test of, uh, of your uh, predictions, uh, that, that would allow to sort out the possible model uh, that you have there. Uh, second category to be explored, these are the dileptonic decays. So this is definitely a place where uh, uh, LHC has the cross-section uh, and the mu is bringing the, the cleanliness of the environment. Uh, but those things, they are a uh, fundamental test and BS to tau plus tau minus is something that I think can only be accessed. At the future, E plus E minus collider. So this is complex experimentally. Again, it requires the, the vertex thing at, uh, at an exquisite level, but it's definitely a test that one wants to, to run. Uh, so that should be part of the, the same collective exploration. And just to, uh, for, for those of you that are acquainted to, uh, let's say, the, the dileptonic searches, uh, this is a this is a plot which highlights the the mass resolution that you get when you reconstruct two leptons at uh, at FCCE. So this is based on a um, fast simulation, but I mean the the tracker which is there is a very reasonable one, uh, and you see that the BD the BD on the left and the BS on the right they are uh, fully separated. So of course the BD still uh, is uh, contaminated by uh, misidentified uh, B0 to pi pi uh, mode, but you, you, you really see that, uh, that you can even study the left hand tail uh, of, the, of the BS. So the, the statistics is a bit smaller than, uh, but commensurate to, to what LHCB is expecting but maybe the cleanliness and the highly resolved uh, peaks uh, allows to make uh, specific studies. Uh, certainly, you have heard uh, during the uh, during this school about RD and RD star, uh, and a way to access it 
reversing the, the diagram is the decay of the BC into town. Uh, and this is also a place where FCC is uh, and CPC are, are uniquely uh, providing a possibility of measurement. I'm insisting that uh, B plus into tau plus new will be also uh, something. And, and this interesting area, uh, well, I mean, LEP is still, uh, even after the, the B factories, LEP is still the, the best of our knowledge on the subject. So there have been studies for BC into tau new, and uh, you see just a flash of uh, of the typical results which have been obtained in, in that paper. And uh, well, uh, it seems very possible to select uh, and, uh, and you can get uh, a few percent precision uh, on the branching fraction. And this is not really limited by the statistics. It's limited by the knowledge of, uh, of branching fraction, external branching fraction to, uh, to predict the branching fraction. Okay, um, I, I will go very fast on the on on the next. So, of course, uh, CP violation uh, remains uh, one of the let's say important uh, measurements that have to be uh, made at future machine and and in the near future as well. Uh, so, it's an inevitable must do of the. Of the flavor program, it's less obvious to identify flagship measurements where FCC is unique, uh, but still, uh, you that competes uh, favorably almost everywhere, uh, and that offers a redundancy with uh, Bell two and uh, with LHCB at the places where they are unique, um, and uh, yeah, to it. That there are a lot of things to, to assess in that respect. So I understood that you, you've spent the, the previous lecture about, uh, in particular, uh, BSM analysis of the, the contributions that can happen in the, in the mixing. So this is a, a view of, uh, of this kind of analysis, and they are very useful because they are defining a figure of merit. Uh, of the performance of the of the future machines, uh, so you fix the apex of the CKM triangle by measurements which are potentially not sensitive uh, to uh, to BSM contribution mixing. So this is gamma and VUB and uh, VCB. Once you have the apex that you suppose CKM and unitarity to stand, you do constrain all the rest and introduce the additional CP violating phases. So in this work, uh, th there is a projection including the different uh, periods. So let's, let's be, uh, uh, this one is now. Uh, the next one on the right is uh, after LHCB upgrade one and Bell two. So that would be 2030. This one is 2040 and this one is eventually with FCC. And uh, the very interesting thing that this study was uh, providing is that you, you see that the improvement is huge uh, from the left to the right, uh, first row, top row. And, uh, and this is much less obvious when you get to the next phase. And so there will be the need to much better measure uh, VCB and QCD mixing parameters, if you want to get the interpretation done at the level of the precision for the rest of the observables that is obtained at those machines. Um, and so VCB uh, that can be uh, instrumental can be measured at WW threshold with on shell uh, Ws. Okay, so I see that I have just uh, one minute uh, left. So I'm just flashing the kind of uh, performance that you can obtain. So for those of you uh, uh, interested in uh, K-star, uh, lepton, lepton, and uh, I'm sure that there are uh, a lot. Uh, well, K-star tau plus tau minus can be reconstructed at FCC. E, as soon as you have a vertex detector that provides this kind of performance, so kind of uh, asymptotic uh, vertex detector. And there were other studies that you can find as reference. 
never forget tau physics. Uh, so I'm passing the implementation, uh, just saying that, uh, well, uh, this, this is a 70 years physics program. You can ask yourself whether that's reasonable and uh, happening here that, well, the previous program, it was foreseen for, for 60 years uh, already. Uh, okay, so that's my, my summary. Uh, the project is, uh, is mature. We need to do the feasibility study to strengthen uh, what can be done over there. You have references if you want to contribute to the study. Fantastic tool for X, for top, for electronic precision test, and also for flavors. Flavors are now, uh, well, since the beginning, it was forcing to be part of the program, but now it's really uh, one of the pillar of the, of the FCC program. So thanks for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, and uh, sorry to <laughs> a little bit push you <laughs> towards the end. Uh, yes, I do see a Rohini had uh, raised his hand. So Rohini, please uh, go on. And then see him. if I have time, I may ask something. Yeah. No, thank you very much. So thanks for uh, this interesting uh, overview. Uh, I had uh, one or two specific questions and one general question. So can we go to your slide 31? Yes. Ah? Uh, yes. 31. Yeah, here. I uh, wanted to know because it's rather difficult to... Uh, we, uh, you know, you made a statement about improvements in theory prediction, but I wanted to know the numbers that are the sizes of the ellipses uh, that you are projecting for FCCE and see what kind of calculation, let's say, of row parameter to what order do we need, really need to do so that uh, the theories, so that this kind of uh, uh, accuracy of measurement is uh, worthwhile. So yeah, first, I, I wanted to know what the numbers are for the accuracy. And secondly, mm -hmm. what are we needing from the theorists? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, that, that's, that, that's a central uh, question. And what I, I would like to highlight is, is that at the very beginning of, uh, of this study, uh, the theory prediction was embodied uh, in the project. So maybe this is one of the places where the most of the workshops uh, have been held. Mm -hmm. So one needs to improve uh, two, two loops uh, everywhere, uh, the, the, the precision. Uh, and, uh, and well, uh, to, to answer what, what precision is needed, uh, I, I'm not sure I can be more quantitative that, that what the, the table Okay, is, no, because uh, I'm not able to see this very, now I, you know, then yeah. you went, it was not very easy to see. So I wanted yeah, to sure. know roughly the, what is the size, vertical size of your uh, small ellipse and horizontal uh, size of the red yeah. uh, ellipse, the small ellipses for FCC. Yeah, so let me take uh, the mass of the W uh, mm -hmm. as an example. So you see that it's expressed in KV, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken he here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is okay. And one, one would go to uh, 600 in stat. Okay, so I so, just needed to get some number, I mean. Because yeah. uh, you went, I mean, obviously you were doing other things, but it's difficult to read numbers uh, at that speed. And uh, for the top, what is the expected uh, thing? And for the top, it's uh, as small as 40 MeV. I see. 40 MeV. So, Sorry, that, 40 MeV that... is the width one, right? Mass, I see 20 MeV. Uh, or am I missing yeah. it? You're right, that's for the width of the yeah. top, that is 40 MeV. Yeah, the, the, the top mass, this is this is 20 MeV, okay. the fourth scene. All right, so that is just, I wanted to get these numbers and wanted to say really that the theory effort, I and mean, of course, this is far away, but the theory effort is going to be stupendous. 
that we are going to require for something like this. In fact, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. already the row parameter to two loops is uh, something that uh, some of the groups have done, and but this will need most likely some three loop computations of uh, row in fact. So okay. thanks for these numbers. Can we go to slide 37? Uh, sorry, Rohini, I mean, if you don't mind, I have yeah. a quick question on this point uh, to Stefan, since we are talking about the top mass, do you, uh, you know, this current thing, the, the CDF, the CDF new result, is that part of the, uh, yet the part of the, uh, the global, um, you know, kind of uh, thing, or, or it is uh, right now an outlier in, in this uh, update? Yeah, yeah, no, no, the they plot, have a very precise. The, yeah, the plot which is uh, which is shown uh, uh, there does not uh, does not contain mm -hmm. uh, the, the latest uh, C CDF result, uh, which is indeed departing from the standard model, but which is also departing from uh, the world average uh, yes. current. So, I mean, th there is a specific thing to do uh, around, sure. okay. uh, around there. No uh, problem, I, I, I get it, no problem. Uh, no, maybe that's, uh, let, let's see, we, we need clarification uh, there. And for sure, uh, FCC would bring clarification on that uh, subject. That was actually going to be one of my questions, uh, maybe my broader question, that uh, on, when it runs on the W, it would uh, make a direct measurement of the W mass, right? Yes. So, so that is the precision. I mean, the yeah, blue precision is really the precision that will come by measuring the uh, rise of the cross section near the W threshold, is it? Or that is for gamma W and uh, mw is more from the cross section i'm just wanting to remind myself at lep uh, we got the gamma w from the rise of the cross section and yes. mw from the from the kinematics basically from uh, regions where you produce lots of w's so when will that happen and the program as its vision is foreseen because first we will That's run on the higgs for a long time, mm. no? Well, uh, maybe not that long, but um, so, so the, the... So that brings you to my general question, actually, about uh, what is the, you said it, but I missed some parts of it. So what is the, what is the, you know, because we, the, actually that relates to my last question, is that when you start talking about flavor observables on the Z pole and how there are complementarities, at what point in time we are imagining the Z-pole uh, run to come in and what kind of information you know, is already going to be there from LHCB and uh, Bell. So that uh, staging is something I'm not uh, very clear about and if you could give some input on that. Okay, so, so you, you brought a lot uh, uh, or, or of questions so let, let, let me try to to give a let, let's say the, the logical uh, operation schedule that should start with the the z uh, if, if if we would uh, be free i, I suppose uh, that should start with the z because one one would calibrate uh, at first mm -hmm. uh, you need to one of the, the challenges to get alpha electromagnetic at the highest mm -hmm. precision possible, that is necessary to go far from the Z in order to, to get it. So two years for that, two years for, for the Z, only two years for the Z full speed uh, uh, for the electroweak uh, precision thing. One year at the W, that would be enough to get uh, something like 210 to the power 8 W. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, five years for the X and uh, so, some years for, for the top. So th then, then of course that's a X factory. So maybe uh, there is the, the necessity to start by the, the X program. So the, the natural way would really to, to, to start with the, with the C. Uh, so I, I really thank you for, for your question on, uh, on the theory because 
I mean, th this is an experimental program, of course, but that embodies the, the theory program and we need to make in, in the next uh, 10 to 15 years the, the progresses all together. Yeah, yeah, that, to that was the point benefit. because already even for LHC, we see that the precision measurement yeah. of the Higgs properties is now to some extent going to be really driven by our uh, PDF understanding, you know? Hmm. So it is the same story. I mean, you know, somebody who has been in the, you know, who has seen things from left days. I mean, I, the minute we started talking about ILC, one of the things people said is that, how are you going, to, what is the precision in the calculation in the, of the row parameter that you need to be able to utilize? Mm -hmm. And now here at FCC, because of the much higher luminosity, you are increasing the precision by orders of magnitude. I mean, okay. even from compared to ILC. I mean, even compared to ILC, there are factors of 10 in the accuracy here. No, no, but that's correct. And yeah. what I can t tell you is that uh, uh, on, on the impulse of uh, our Polish colleagues in particular, that there, there are activities which have mm -hmm. foreseen. Yeah, this uh, is essentially driven by a lot of Polish Polish. colleagues, in fact. So yeah. I, I know that. Okay, so they, thank they you did very it much for, for <laughs> They did it for Lev largely. So thank you very much for your uh, patience and detailed reply. Um, thank you, Ruini. Uh, so Jim, um, I think we we are running late. Um, so if you have a quick question, because I see Christina is patiently waiting, and yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so so please go ahead. Yeah, I, I, it's hopefully a quick question, but it's about flavor, so I, I wanted to, to ask it. So I, I've always been intrigued by the fact that the, the flavor tagging for the CP measurements, the, the, the effective uh, efficiency is, is, is very high at uh, FCCEE. Could you just explain why it's competitive with the, the B factories where you, you no longer have the coherence? So. Um, what what are the tricks that are used to get the tagging so so efficient? Yeah. Um, so th these are uh, the the numbers that are coming uh, from uh, from LEP, um, where uh, twenty twenty percent was uh, was achieved or something like that and. Maybe that's the place where I should uh, use. Yeah, so, so uh, I don't know where it, it, it was mentioned, but it, it is thought that uh, that one gets uh, twenty five uh, percent or so, um, and, and so I, I don't I don't really know uh, if, if I could I think... highlight a trick uh, for, for for this so, so you have the, the current production so you, you have the charge which is uh, some somehow none on, on the other side um, pretty uh, straightforwardly again you wanted to yeah no I was just saying if the number that you were saying 25 was the number for live I could imagine given the the super smart vortex detector and you know if you are talking of a dedicated uh, flavor like with the PID capability built in I, I could imagine 30 percent uh, I mean okay <laughs> you know we have to figure it out from the left side the number 25 percent but uh, yeah. yes I think possible yeah, yeah I, so, so I, that that's an inference uh, so somehow, but that that could be yes uh, reasonable. I, I I guess it's same side information is probably driving it up in a way that maybe. Yeah. Okay. I, I should look back at the lab papers. I was there, but I forgot. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. Well, I have some questions, but maybe I will drop an email to you, Stephen, if you don't mind. Um, in the interest of time, I would uh, thank you once again and um, for a very nice uh, comprehensive talk about uh, FCC and particularly EE e part of it. Hopefully, um, I hope I wouldn't have super annuated by then, um, uh, but uh, definitely looking forward to 
exciting program. So, yeah, I think we, we close this session and uh, the next speaker is there, but I hand over to Jim. Jim. Yeah, no, th thank you very much, Stefan. Um...